Welcome to What Starts Here. I'm Alex Loeb. Our studio today is the LBJ Presidential Library, and given President Johnson's ties to our nation's space program, a fitting location for our first story. In 1903, the Wright brothers achieved the first heavier-than-air flight. Just six decades later, Neil Armstrong made that giant leap for mankind. Now just 100 years removed from Kitty Hawk, a group of aerospace and engineering students on the 40 acres are trying to become the next pioneers of space exploration. The Mariner 2 countdown yeah, begins. You're coming down. Along 30 now. May 1966. Three, two, one, and the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. It's a really exciting time. There's a lot of really great technological advancement on the horizon. You see companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, they're really kind of pioneering this new development in space. Lift off on the first commercial launch from Kennedy Space Center's historic Pad 39A. To be on the brink of the next generation of that is incredibly exciting, especially as we're entering the Mars generation. Mars is really about getting the spaceship built. It's a certainty at this point that we will land a human on Mars and potentially even further within our lifetime. And there are people on the planet right now who will do that. I and the rest of the people here in the UT Aerospace Department are going to be part of that revolution to be the people that will land a man on Mars. At the University of Texas, it's very noticeable. The College of Aerospace and Engineering is booming and enrollment is skyrocketing to the tune of 15% since 2014. Now, the same school that calls NASA legends Alan Bean, Karen Nyberg, and Stephanie Wilson distinguished alumni is grooming the next generation. And they're being taught at a shiny new state-of-the-art complex called the Engineering Education and Research Center. With the EERC being so new, it really attracts a lot of the brightest minds here at UT. They want to come to this facility because it's the best, it has the best equipment, and probably the best staff on campus. It's been transformative because the facility is outstanding. It's a cool building and everybody wants to be here. We're in a robotics lab right now, a brand new robotics lab. Like, that's so cool that we are able to do that. It definitely leads to an environment of creativity and inspiration. We've got all kinds of high-tech equipment, 3D printers, laser cutters, machining equipment. A lot of our prototyping and manufacturing is done in here. The lab spaces that we have, all of the different projects the students are working on, all of the resources that are available here to engineering students, it's really something else. It's a great time to be an aerospace engineering student, that's for sure. One group of 100 students who spends most of their free time at the EERC calls themselves the Longhorn Rocketry Association. The Longhorn Rocketry Association is a student-run, high-power rocketry association. We were incepted back in 2008, just recently celebrated our 10-year anniversary. It was started by students who wanted to get more hands-on feeling for rocket flight than is provided by the course that I teach on jet engine and rocket propulsion. We just started up, yeah, I did the low-speed test. Essentially, we design, build, test, launch, and fly high-powered rockets. We are currently working on our own hybrid rocket engines and all kinds of advanced rocketry projects from active braking systems to engine throttling systems, high-powered rockets that go supersonic speeds. And so it's a really great supplement to classes to work on hands-on real engineering problems and to actually physically get to build things, which I think is really what excites people. At the end of the day, to get to see something that you built light up and fly in the air, is, it's indescribable. For the past two years, the LRA has been competing in the world's largest international collegiate rocket competition called the Spaceport America's Cup. Last year, more than 100 different teams representing 40 different countries converged on Las Cruces, New Mexico for this eight-day event. So last year at the 2018 Spaceport America Cup, our challenge was to build a rocket to go to 10,000 feet above ground level using a commercial off-the-shelf solid rocket motor. Yeah. We actually hit 9,201 feet. Getting eighth in our category, that was nice, I want more. We think we have a much better chance of actually winning. So that's the goal for right now. We're all really excited to see if we can bring it home this year. Oh, I'm extremely proud of them. They've achieved a lot, and I'm just waiting to see what they do next. 
And guys, make sure you can see the camera. I get to make rockets and fly them. I get to make engines and fire them. It's really impressive, honestly. It's a lot of fun. I love doing what I'm doing. We're gonna stand next to each other. That works. We're not just fooling around here. We're actually learning real skills that are applicable. And the work that we're doing and developing will actually be the work that we do in our careers going forward. And the skills that you need to send someone to another planet is really what we're working on here. One, two, and three.